Lance, did you have something else? I felt like you were wanting to share something earlier, and I didn't get to you. Yeah, the, you know, the verse that balances out and makes sense out of when you hear prophecy like Hank is saying tonight, my heart goes back to, I remember when uh, Donald Trump ran in 2016. It's just a few of us were talking about this idea that God was about to intervene in American affairs through a guy that they weren't expecting him to use. And the Lord gave me a word before the, uh, actually it's a sober word. It was Chuck Pierce gave it, and most people don't even realize how accurate a prophet he, he can be. He said that unless there is a shift in America by midterms, within four years you'll see the undoing of everything Donald Trump has done. It was an unusual prophecy, and I actually called to get a clarification. I said, did you actually say what I think you said in one short sentence? That if there wasn't a shift in America, that the midterms results, this is going to be in like 2018, would be such that within four years, which put us in 2020, everything that was accomplished will be undone. Well, he prophesied it would all be undone. And I just watched when Biden came in, everything was undone. And the word the Lord gave me in 2016 about us is God will give us deliverance. God will give us the strategies. But we have to actually meet God in our agency. And not expect it because it's been said, preached, prophesied, or proposition that it's going to manifest. And here's what I got in 2016. The Lord said, this will be the challenge for your generation. Elisha became sick with the illness with which he would die, and King Joash of Israel came to him and wept over his face and said, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen. He knew, it. He knew the anointing of the double portion. The prophet of God was about to leave. And Elisha said to him, I know what you need. You need something from me. Take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, Put your hand on the bow. So he put his hands on it. Elijah put his hands on the king's hands. Now you've got the anointing and you've got human agency. You've got the obedience of a person in an office of a king and you have the prophetic resting on it with all the potential of changing the situation. And he said, now open the east window. And he opened it and then Elijah said, shoot. And he shot. And he said, that's the arrow of the Lord's deliverance, the arrow of deliverance from Syria. You must strike the Syrians at Aphek until you've destroyed them. You cannot go halfway. You have to go all the way for this victory. That's right. You can't go in part. You can't think, well, I just want to get by this one time. I just want to get past this. And he took the arrows. And he said, take the arrows. And he took them. Then the prophet said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he struck, boom, 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 three times. And the man of God was angry. And he said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you destroyed it. Here's my burden. We have got to get to an, a, a dimension of unity in the body of Christ where we pierce through this kind of discord and fragmentation of exertion and come to that critical point of critical mass where we smite the arrows five or six. There is still a warfare over the unity of the body of Christ. What we're doing should not be that novel. The fact that, and then even when I, I hear Gene saying, do you, it's almost like a pleading, do you see the value in this? It ought to be obvious. This thing isn't sewed up. It's I feel all the time, and when I'm around the prophets, I try to be optimistic, but I'm Jewish enough to be pessimistic. And here's what I, I remind myself of Patton's great line in that movie when they're at Bastogne, and he reminds Eisenhower, he says, we could still lose this. There's victory in the atmosphere, but it's not a done deal. That's right. I'm telling you, there's a victory over America, but it's not sealed. There have been too many authoritative, divisive voices, even speaking to the body of Christ, causing us to question whether or not the United States is actually the inheritance of Jesus. You have no idea how goofy some apostolic and prophetic networks are that are questioning whether the United States is even a nation that was given to Jesus and founded by God for a unique purpose of God, causing a doubt, even for guys like me when I'm in front of them, wondering, is, is Jesus the Lord of nations or isn't he? 
are nations to be given to him as his inheritance, or aren't they? And part of our problem is we have such a focus on rapturitis, we're so anxious to get out, we're out of here, that we don't realize you're not out till the job's done. You're not out till the job's done. So I was in Israel, I was speaking like a hundred nations, go to the Feast of Tabernacles, I'm down there, I'm part Jew, so I'm down there talking to my people. I got a meeting with Knesset, have a hundred different nations there. And when I was there, Jesse was there, I had to go to Israel to get hope for America. Because here's what the Lord said to me. He said he wants to give us four more years, but it will be troubled times because the left will freak out. You think now that they've got the power consolidated that they've got, they virtually threaded their way through every institution, academic, corporate, political, media, arts, entertainment. There's not a single mountain that they do not occupy right now. And we're, we're like the hobbits out here trying to take the ring to mortar and, get, and, and break the system. Understand, we are not in a position of power. But that's okay. God likes to take, shall we say, the weak things to confound the mighty. We're going to have to actually move with a, lot, with a whole different degree of bang on that ground. Five or six, we have to have a greater unity, a greater intentionality. 3,143 counties in America, 30 are going to determine the future of this country. You ought to know what those 30 are, and we ought to have intercessors. We ought to have evangelists. We should be pounding those 30 counties day and night. Because victory is possible, and it's not a done deal. When I was in Israel, the Lord told me this. I'll give you four more years. I had to get it from, I got it, got it in Israel. The Lord said, for the sake of the nations. Because America is still the one restraining force in the global world of anarchy and agendas. We hold China from its agenda. We hold Islam still in check as long as Trump's been around. He put a check on that spirit. You haven't heard about terrorism and ISIS. You haven't been afraid of what a radical Muslim might do. You haven't had that fear because he was so hit back when, when Donald Trump, like a modern-day Cyrus, undid the ability of his adversaries to hurt us. The Lord said he'd give us four more years. The issue's still hanging in the balance. He'll give us, it's his will to give it to us. But he so told me, you better run through those nations when I give it to you, because I'm going to restrain lawlessness globally for the sake of one great mighty revival and one great harvest. You better run furiously. So I'm telling you, I believe God wants to give us four years. I think Trump, they want to lock him up. You ought to be praying for him. We are so insensitive and disconnected from what that man is going through. He got hurt in New York. They're, they hit him with $250 million as a baseline. He could go up to $600 million. They're gutting him financially. They're destroying Eric and Donnie's future business enterprises. Family business for the whole family is being torn down. They'd love to tear down the brand and the buildings of Trump. They're sending a message to anyone else that dares to enter into the boys club in Washington. You better not send someone in here again. We'll raise up our own. Well, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that the body of Christ is here at this moment in history. That's right. That we are here to move in a unique unity that will hit the arrows on the ground five, six, seven times. We're not asking for a temporary relief or a momentary deliverance. We're praying for a divine shift in the atmosphere. I pray that now a greater unity will come into the body of Christ in the area of civic engagement than ever before. And those voices that would intimidate and embarrass us with Christian nationalism and dominionism shall be crushed and made silent. I pray, Lord, that in all those 20 or 30 counties that are decisive in America, that you're going to raise up your ecclesia, you will build your church, and you will build a mighty apostolic end-time harvest machine that will go through the earth. I pray and thank you, Father, that you're revealing these things to your servants right now, that we might be in agreement with you for their manifestation. And everyone said, Amen. 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 All right, so.